I was six years old when my family left Bosnia. This was in 1992. Before we left Sarajevo, there was still a lot of, you know, bad stuff happening. Uh, snipers and so on shooting at the city, so we stayed inside. For more than two months now, Sarajevo has been under siege. And one of one of the most most poignant memories from my childhood there, because I was only six years old, so I don't remember that much. Luckily, for, fortunately, I would say, um, was playing with my Barbie dolls um, with my cousin, who's my age, in my grandma's bathroom. So for me, the memory right before we left Bosnia had, was incredibly positive. This was on our balcony back at home. We left on a bus with a number of other refugee families. The bus was pulled over by some army um, and all of the men were ordered to get off. So I was with my dad, my mom, and my brother. Um, and so all of the men started getting, you know, started saying goodbye to their families and had to get off the bus. I thought, you know, that was the last time I was gonna see my dad. However, the bus driver said that for his long journey, he is required to have someone to switch off with. And so he said that my dad was the other bus driver and that they had to take turns. So my dad was the only man who got to stay on the bus, which I think is hard for him too. <laughs> um, but my family stayed as a unit. We eventually made it down to Northern Germany. Um, there's this guy, and again, this is another theme in my life, there's always somebody who you consider an angel on earth. And he took us in to his home, um, into a room in his house, and until we were able to sort of get set up. But that never, getting set up is, a, I guess it's a relative term, we were safe. Um, but uh, like all of the other Bosnian refugees, we were on a temporary visa. So every three months, my family had to go to the courthouse or some other government entity to see whether they could get another three month visa. But then came that day, and we knew that day was gonna come, that we were not going to get that visa. Um, so my family had actually started applying for asylum or seeking refugee status in other countries. We ended up actually in Tennessee um, in a small town, we had some cousins there. This is the first time I woke up in my American bed. <laughs> I think, and I, I, I say this a lot too, I, I really do consider myself one of the luckiest people on earth because I feel like my story is, scratches the surface of some of the horrific stories of you you know, children that, that I work with now and, and other children from home. Bosnia as well. C-A-N. Oh, I should tell you the word and yeah. you have to write it. Okay. I, you know, I now tutor at San Diego Refugee Tutoring, um, which is, you know, an organization that I fall in love with very quickly. Um, and I tutor different uh, children every week. Um, there's one one kid, Maria from Syria, Test. who um, who I've really connected with. The book. The book. See the hair. The hair. <laughs> Maria is incredibly excited about everything. Me, I like it. Um, dance. Okay. How do you like to dance? But she's lacking the ability to express herself in English. July. And I remember that frustration as a kid, both in Germany and in the U.S. <laughs> It's, it's the easiest one. One thing that my mom has said often to anyone who will listen um, when any, any you know, discussion about being a refugee comes up is that nobody wants to be a refugee. That's really, really exciting. If you meet a refugee who just got here on day one, just know that they'd also rather have a home that isn't here. And that's not to say that they're not happy and incredibly grateful to be here as my family has been. It's, it's to know that this is, this is it for them. This is, this is the best choice that, that they are able to make given the circumstances in their own motherland. Thank you, you're very nice.